different worlds. Now, I had an amazing experience. I was 45 years old. I'd been conducting for 20 years, and I suddenly had a realization. The conductor of an orchestra doesn't make a sound. My picture appears on the front of the CD. <laughs> But the conductor doesn't make a sound. He depends for his power on his ability to make other people powerful. And that changed everything for me. It was totally life-changing. People in my orchestra came up to me and said, Ben, what happened? That's what happened. I realized my job was to awaken possibility in other people. And of course, I wanted to know whether I was doing that. And you know how you find out? You look at their eyes. If their eyes are shining, you know you're doing it. You could light up a village with this guy's eyes. <laughs> Right, so if, you, if the eyes are shining, you know you're doing it. If the eyes are not shining, you get to ask a question. And this is the question. Who am I being that my player's eyes are not shining? We can do that with our children, too. Who am I being that my children's eyes are not shining? That's a totally different world. Now, we're all about to end this magical on the mountain week. And we're going back into the world. And I say, it's appropriate for us to ask the question, who are we being as we go back out into the world? And you know, I have a definition of success. For me, it's very simple. It's not about wealth and fame and power. It's about how many shining eyes I have around me. So now, I have one last thought, which is that it really makes a difference what we say, the words that come out of our mouth. I learned this from a woman who survived Auschwitz, one of the rare survivors. She went to Auschwitz when she was 15 years old. And um, her brother was eight, and the parents were lost. And um, she told me this. She said, we were in the train going to Auschwitz, and I looked down and I saw my brother's shoes were missing. And I said, why are you so stupid? Can't you keep your things together, for goodness sake? The way an elder sister might speak to a younger brother. Unfortunately, it was the last thing she ever said to him because she never saw him again. He did not survive. And so when she came out of Auschwitz, she made a vow. She told me this. She said, I walked out of Auschwitz into life. And I made a vow. And the vow was, I will never say anything that couldn't stand as the last thing I ever say. Now, can we do that? No, and we'll make ourselves wrong and others wrong. But it is a possibility to live into. Thank you.